Hey everybody and welcome to another craft tutorial. Before we get started, be sure to check out my website listed down below. You can sign up for my free newsletter, check out my free SVGs, and lots of other fun stuff over at CorinneBlackstone.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to piece together a large sublimation image. Now this is super sparkly and shiny, so it's a little bit hard to see. But this was a pretty big image, way bigger than 8.5 by 11. So I'm going to show you how to simply piece one of these together to make larger images if your printer can't do big prints. It's super fun and super easy, so let's get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. We are going to do this in Inkscape, but there's lots of ways that you can do it. I just find Inkscape to be pretty easy when it comes to doing this. Just follow along, I promise you'll be okay. So the first thing that I want to do is import my design. Now you can click File, Import, or you can just drag and drop. It's really up to you. I'm going to go ahead and click File, Import, and then I just need to go and get my design. So I know that mine is under my Disney folder, and it's one I made, so pretty easy. Nothing crazy, but we're going to put this on one of those flippy sequin pillows. Now clearly it has uploaded very, very large. So the first thing that I'm going to do is up here at the top, you can see where there's a width and a height and a little lock. Click on the little lock, that'll keep your proportions. And then right here where the MM is, go ahead and change this to IN for inches. And I know that I'm gonna go about 13.5 wide um, and it is a little bit tall. So I think what I might do is stretch this out a little bit more to make it fit in our pillow because our pillow is 15 inches tall so let me just see kind of how thin that makes it um it's not too bad so let's see what 14 does because i want to keep it at least pretty big that's pretty good i think a little bit over 10 inches by 14 is perfectly fine for this design now because we do have kind of a longer version we'll be able to kind of slice this in half top to bottom and be able to really make this pretty easily. So the first thing that I need to do, because my Inkscape is weird and yours might be too, is go file, document properties, and make sure that you have the US letter 8.5 by 11 selected. Now because of the way I'm going to slice this, I'm gonna change mine over to landscape. That way it is wider than it is tall. So you can see we should be able to fit this in there pretty well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab a square and I'm just going to draw a random rectangle. Now this rectangle, when you first draw it, can be any size that you want, but when you are ready, we need to change the size so that it's the size of our paper. So remember, we're doing this width-wise, so we have 11 inches wide and we actually need to unclick this little um, lock so that we can change the proportions and we know that we have 8.5 inches high. That is the size of our paper. Now, I will say that this, if you can't see through it, it can be kind of annoying. So if that is causing you some like grief and annoyance, there are ways to make this more transparent. You can go into the fill and stroke under object and it should open a little panel for you. And if it doesn't, it might just be down here at the bottom. It just depends. It's a little slow. So it opens this little panel for you. And right here is your um, opacity. So you can actually change your opacity so that you can see through it. So you can see where you're putting it. It just makes it a little bit easier when you're doing something like this to really move it a little bit so you can truly see what you're doing. Now, I will say this is going to be a pretty tight fit on the edges of our paper. So I may go just a little bit smaller, maybe just down to 10 inches on the nose. That's a little bit better, although I see now that I accidentally uh, didn't select our lock. So what I need to do, I'm just going to I'm going to click edit and undo. And let me click that lock and then change this down to 10 inches. I just think it'll fit a little bit better and I kind of like that size. I think that size is pretty good. I don't want to take up the whole pillow. So now what I'm going to do is line this up so it covers my design. Then I'm going to select this, right click, click copy and just click paste. Now you're going to have your other square and you're going to overlap these. Now you can kind of move them however you want if it's easier for you to like 
just choose where you want to line this up. It doesn't matter. So that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is select everything by drawing a big square around it. And then what you can do is go to edit and click duplicate. You can also do copy paste. It's really up to you. Now you see that we have two of these designs. So what I need to do is delete one of the rectangles off of the design. So I'm going to delete the bottom rectangle off of our first one. I'm going to select that entire design. And then what I'm going to do is go to object, clip, and set. And you'll see that it clipped it apart so that now I have just one piece that will fit on my page. But now we need to do our second half. So you're going to go ahead and delete your top square, select the entire design. Then what you're going to do is go again to object, clip, and set. Now you'll see that you have a little design that will line up. Now it is a little hard to line it up here on the screen, but this is going to make it a little bit easier by having overlapping portions so that it's a little easier to line it up when you go to print this. So what I'm going to do is put one of these in the paper and then I'm going to click on file and print. I want to make sure that I have the right printer selected. I am using my ST4000 with Starcraft ink and Starcraft paper for this. So what I'm going to do is select that and go to preferences. And I just want to make sure that I change this to high Then go to more options, turn off high speed and turn on mirror image. This has words. So you want to make sure that you mirror it. Click OK here and then click print. And we're going to have that one print out. Once you've printed this one, you can move this one off of the little block here and then move the other one on. Then all you have to do is those same steps. Go to file, print, then you want to go to preferences, to high, and then go to more options and turn off high speed and turn on mirror image. Click OK and click print. Once that's done, I'll show you guys how to piece this together. We have our two sheets and one of the reasons that we cut with the overlap is so that when we trim the edge off here, we won't have any like trouble getting it really well lined up. So I'm going to trim the edge off of the top portion and I'm just using a paper cutter. You can really use whatever you want and I'm just going to get this nice and lined up even and straight. And I just like to use the lines on here and I just want to make sure that the edge is hanging off and then it's going to cut off just a little bit of our print. So you can see I cut just a smidgen of the print off of the design. Now be careful, these are pretty sharp. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over to the side. And now we have our design. So as you can see, we are going to have overlap. So what I'm going to do is get this all lined up. And this part is pretty easy to do. You just figure out where it is lined up with everything. That looks really good. Now it is probably going to shift a little bit, so I will probably need to realign. But what I'm going to do is take some heat resistant tape. And this is from Caesar. And I'm just going to make sure to get this well lined up again. That looks perfect. And I'm just going to put a little bit right here on this edge. And I'm just going to make sure that this still looks well aligned. It looks good. And then I'm just going to put a little bit over on this edge and that's going to hold them together. Now I will say I did notice that mine did cut this off. I've been having a little bit of trouble with Inkscape lately where it's been cutting things off, even though it fits within the printable area. I'm just going to go with it because this pillow is really not my favorite. But just be aware, you'll want to double check that before you go to like piece everything together. But you can see it cut off the S here and parts of the T's. There's just something going on with Inkscape that I, I know it's a, a known issue. So what I'm going to do now is turn this over and I'm going to put a bigger piece of tape across this seam. That way that just holds it all together a little bit easier. And you can fold these pieces over just to give it that little bit of extra stability. Now we are doing this on one of these uh, flippy sequin pillows. And like I said, this one is not a great quality pillow, probably not one I would recommend ordering again, but it's what we have on hand that was in the right size. 
So what I'm going to do is you'll see I'm going to place this face down on my pillow, get it about where I want it, and then I'm going to take some tape and I'm just going to go ahead and tape this down. Now I'm going to make sure that I tape this down right at the seams and I'm going to make sure that I tape the top and the bottom as well. And this is just again the Caesar heat tape. This is my favorite. I find this does not leave a lot of residue. Now you want to, if you're using the flippy sequin one, you're going to want to make sure that you do this on the light side. We have silver and like this black. But again, I've had this a while. I don't love the quality. I'll link it below. It's not horrible, but it's not great. So we're going to press this at about 395 for about 60 seconds. Now you're going to want to put a piece of butcher paper on top of this design. And then I do always recommend putting one in between, but you can see the back of this is black. So you don't need to worry about any of the image showing through. So I'm going to go ahead and get the heat press going and then we can press this. So I've got my heat press up to temperature and then I do have some butcher paper on top. I've got a couple layers just to be safe and then a Teflon sheet to protect my heat press as well. And again, I press this at kind of a medium pressure for about 60 seconds. This is set to about 395. I have it set to 397 because it does tend to drop temperature when you press. So all we're going to do is just go ahead and drop our press and allow that to press for 60 seconds. Once it's done pressing, we can go ahead and lift up our press. And we're going to remove the butcher paper and I will kind of try to show you guys, I'll put it over on the table and show you guys why the butcher paper is so important when pressing any kind of sublimation. And then we'll go ahead and take our sublimation print off. So this is pretty fun to do. It's real easy. Now I will say when popping off the tape, just be careful because this is very warm, but it is really important that you take the design off pretty quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off. I'll move this over to the table after it cools for a little bit and show you what it looks like. So we've pressed it and I don't know how well you guys will be able to see this, but there is some ghosting on the back of our butcher paper. This is why it's really important to put butcher paper between your press and your sublimation design. That way this doesn't get on to your press because that can actually press onto something else. So it's really important. There's just a little bit on that one. There's really none on this one. And this one just has the lightest little bit on it. So not too bad. And then here is our pillow. I think this came out really cute and it's fun because all you just do is you can just kind of flip your sequins and then you can't see your fun design. And then you can just flip them back to reveal your design. Now again, I probably would not necessarily recommend this exact pillow. The sequins feel a little bit cheap and you can see they don't flip really great. It took me a while to get them all to flip the right direction so that I could even press it. So again, probably would not recommend, but I will um, post another pillow that I used that I liked a lot better, but this one was what I had on hand. But I think it's still really fun, really pretty, and obviously the brighter design that you do, like the more colorful it will be, plus Using a white sequin can really make a big difference as well. Being that this is kind of a medium silver, it's not going to show quite as brightly, but I think it's really pretty and kind of subtle. So it's really exciting and really fun. And I just think these pillows really are just fun to play with, aren't they? So this was a really fun little thing that we did. We learned how to piece together a larger print if you can only print a small size on your sublimation printer. It's super easy, really fun. And if you guys have any questions, please let me know in those comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Make sure you hit that big red subscribe button down below as well. It is totally free to subscribe to my channel. And if you click the bell icon, it will let you know when I post a new video or when I go live. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and happy crafting.